Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do the last issue of Brass by Image Comics. This is issue number three. Um, yeah, in my last two videos, um, I thought, okay, where, where is this going? Because it's confusing. I really don't get it at some times. And um, yeah, this issue is, is no different. And, um, you know, when I reviewed the issue number two, I didn't know if the story could be wrapped up in, in a good way. Um, spoiler, it's not really the case, but you know, we're going to find out anyway. So let's, um, let's dive in and see if it's actually good. Well, first of all, the cover, it's a wraparound. It's fantastic. Let me see if I can show you. Holy shit, man. I have absolutely zero complaints about the art. I mean, actually the art is probably the best I have seen in years. It's that detailed, and you know how I love my detail in comics. I mean, uh, we see Roxy. This is also just a little bit of uh, fan service. Remember these two, Grunge and Roxy from Gen 14? <laughs> they want to go into clubs, and they have some fake IDs, and they couldn't get in. That, that made me chuckle a bit. But, uh, yeah, I mean, just the detail is amazing. And no Photoshop BS, right? This is none. This is all hand-drawn. That's, that's the difference, man, with, when, with good artists. And there's, I don't want to rag about digital artists too much. I mean, I have a lot of comics that are digital, it's really good. But it seems that people, in my opinion, need to you know, make more effort when it comes to digital art. The reason is um, digital art looks sometimes, especially buildings and windows and, and, and everything else, it looks too clean, right? It's just too square. Well, with with uh, art, you can you know this, this, it feels more organic if 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 you if you know what I mean. Um, but that's more like about this matter. Like I said, it's more personal preferences. Um, I know a lot of digital artists; they're all great, fun people. Um, I don't want to knock them down too much, but you know I have to point out you know what I like and dislike, uh, or what I like less. Let's let's leave it at that. Um, Damn, it's so good. Anyway, so this is a, I don't know, a rave going on. And uh, people having fun. People falling over the balcony for no reason at all. Uh, I'm not sure. And then, I don't know, the building blows up. <laughs> it looks so cool. It's so incredibly cool. Because, I don't know, brass is, um, you know, falling. And these creatures are coming. And I love the designs. I love it. Uh, Jesus Christ, man. I'm sorry, I just always marvel over these fantastic detailed art and the designs are crazy good. Um, so what happens? So here's a recap. Um, we have um, Herschel Goldstein. He has turned into brass. And Herschel says, I was being chased by the cops uh, through the city's underground tunnels and I found something down there. A weird machine. When I touched it, some, something shot out of and poked me, and then I blacked out. When I came to, I was covered in this metal stuff. That's when the cops found me. Before they could do, uh, stop me, or try stop me, the machine started up again. It came rattling and bubbling to life. Then it broke, and then the cops fell into the ground, screaming in agony. Uh, basically, he says that they are also turning into, well, mechanized beings just like he did and he knows the, the pain that they're feeling because well the whole body is transforming it's not they get a layer of um metal on the on the skin no 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 their whole dna is changing they literally become the machine itself and um so yeah and they are i don't know try to kill them or something i'm not sure why but probably that's in the dna too but look at this man this looks freaking awesome and even this small from this female, you know, with the heels. It's really good. Anyway, so um, so he tried to talk them out of it, but they are, I don't know, not answering or they can't, can't answer. And then, I don't know, the, the, the arm itself forming in some kind of a sword, and he cuts one in two, and um, well, this guy is shooting at him, uh, or this creature, and he is also, you know, destroying him. Oh, damn. So good. Sorry, I'm, I'm marvel over the, the beautiful looking art. Um, and look at this, man. This action scene looks so cool, so kinetic. I love the colors also, you know, with the with the 
light greens is this pastel of different lighter colors instead of all those black and reds and you know blues no this is totally different and uh it's it's a nice change of scenery if you know uh, what i mean when it comes to colors i like that a lot um so i didn't i don't know um we are in the space and there's russians and americans working together and then they are being contacted by Miles Craven. Now, who is Miles Craven? He's the director of IO. IO is, stands for International Reparations. Um, Long-time uh, image readers um, know, uh, well, knows this guy. Um, well, there's, there's a whole story about Miles Craven. Let's leave it at that. But, okay, small recap. Um, if I'm collecting the right data, I hope. So it seems that uh, Miles Craven... Um, was uh, there was a project for IO? Um, there was a, a, a virus called BRAS, a techno organic virus uh, that turned uh, you know living issue or you know or um, tissue into living machinery for war. So and he was involved in that, but it, it got out of control and um, and I don't know the the virus was kept away dormant and then now. Because of uh, Herschel Goldstein, he fought, he fought the, um, the brass virus, it's getting factored in, and, and now everything is, you know, coming up back to life. Uh, it seems that Miles is now aware that the brass virus is still active now, and he wants to stop it because it's, quote-unquote, his property. Okay? Um, so he explains it here as well a little bit. And this woman says, what is it, sir? Um, something I knew would come back to haunt me, Sharon. Years ago, we had a top military biologist design a virus that, if introduced to a human body, could turn that person into a living, breathing machine. It would have the quick decision-making ability of a person coupled with the power and vulnerability of a robot. In theory, that is. So, yeah, they are just making this, you know, for warfare. And... Um, but, but basically, they are, they are losing control because they are, were too strong or something like that. And um, yeah, basically, he says now we, we need to get that virus back before it gets into the, the wrong hands. But, you know, Miles Craven is not really the good guy here overall. Um, so he sends his, I don't know, I believe Team 7. Um, team Seven is, is also a, um, a well, let's say I'm not sure it's a superhero team, but that was a let's say they are military spec ops with powers, right? And um, there's a lot of uh, you know known people in there. Um, for instance, uh, Jesus, that guy from Wildcats, I forgot. Um, also, that guy from uh, Gen 13, John Lynch. I believe it was his name, um, Cole Cash. Uh, yeah, Cole Cash, that was Grifter, you know. Uh, we have Death Blow, Backlash, um, and a couple of others, um, which I forgot. I'm not really was into Team 7, but I remember bits and pieces of that. Um, so in the last issue, they sent Team 7. I'm not sure these are t parts of Team 7 as well. But it <laughs> looks so good. Uh, so they are, I don't know, sending high-tech planes and they are being bombarded with artillery from... Is this brass or is this somebody else? I, I cannot really see what's going on. But it seems that, you know, oh no, this is the, this is the, the other guy, that, one of the cops that turned into the, uh, to this robot. So yeah, okay, they, uh, a lot of bodies flying around, a lot of, you know, damage and debris. Also, this, look at this, all these explosions going on. And uh, because this plane is falling out of the sky and, you know, killing a lot of people. And then Brass is erecting some kind of a shield. And look at these guys, man. These are being ripped into pieces. And, well, Brass, you know, survives with this woman. And uh, more planes are coming. Oh, craving to spare leader. So, okay, so basically he's ordering to do something. So, well, this is... Gen 13, let of add with Adam Warren. Adam Warren is great. It's just, just pure fun. If you've got a Gen 13 comic, look for it. Great, great stuff. A lot of different artists, sometimes serious, sometimes funny, like with this with Adam Warren. Do it. Anyway, so this cop woman is turned into a robot, has a super awesome 
well, I'm not sure if it's a power, but she has, I don't know, her spine that detaches from her and the spine are turning into locked missiles. It looks so cool. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the, the story is not really going anywhere. Anyway, um, the designs looks freaking awesome, but I, I said that already. Uh, moving on, um, it seems that also more people with tanks or military comes in and uh, they want to, uh, you know, capture these brass like robots and they're shooting something at the brass armor. And um, so I believe they are short circuiting or something or they are blanking out, getting unconscious. And then he sees, I don't know, some kind of an explosion in his, you know, in dreams or something. Like I said, it's, it's very vague. So, and then we are basically back at the beginning of issue number one at the second, third page or the first page where he was in a post-apocalyptic world far into the future. But, you know, it's all in his head. And then this being comes and he says, little girl, you better get out of here. Um, you wouldn't want to get hurt now. What you hear as a voice is the, is the series of right, redirected electrical impulses in your brain. We are inside your mind. We are the virus inside you. So what do you want to talk about? I mean, yeah, Herschel is pretty calm. Not sure why, but it seems that, um, well, um, he is he lying on a table on, in the IO uh, facilities. Well, IO and, well, and Miles Craven and the scientists probing him, etc. And he says, um, so the virus says that the, his body is now altered permanently. And he, uh, he also talks about it. What about these robots? These are the microscopic enzymes that we have created. They are messengers of a sort. They wait in the outer layers of your skin, gathering information from the outer world, relaying it back to us, the central virus. That's pretty cool, I think, right? So they have maybe or maybe not a symbiotic relation. So Herschel is just lying down in this world. So he says, you're not really a little girl. Listen to us carefully, Herschel. Although we are inside you and have altered your genetic makeup um, of your body, you and we, is it not you and I? Okay. But you and we still fit to the subjective roles of host and parasite. In the limits of this present uh, relationship, we can do nothing to hinder the plans that Mouse Craven has for you and us. He says, plans? Yes, to introduce a third element to your system capable of controlling us and indirectly you. So this thing here is the third element. It's a new virus, a retrovirus, and they can erase the new techno virus taking over thus taking over the brass technology and controlling the people who, you know, are infected by it. Pretty genius, if you ask me. How they come up with those technology, I have no fucking clue because the comic book does not explain that to me. Um, anyway, so she has a proposition here. She says, um, there is an alternative. You and I, or you and we, can merge for, uh, so form an unfriend to form an unfrag unfragmented being. The results, you, we, being, would have total control of its body from a, a subatomic level. The retrovirus would find itself against an, uh, an impenetrable, impenetrable force. So basically, the, the retrovirus can do anything, but the virus does not know if they merge together what they will become eventually. So Herschel says, oh, yeah. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? Uh, so weird. Anyway, so they are merging. There's stuff happening. There's music. There's, uh, you know, some kind of a sea of data overflowing him. And we have some cool imagery here that I have no clue what it means. But, you know, probably about the transformation. And... Um, this is happening. So he wakes up, fully human. Miles Craven is here and he says, hey, I'm back to normal. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're having a nightmare, says Wes. The doctor said it might happen. We inject you with a virus to counteract the one you had in your system. And from the look of it, I say it works. The two viruses destroy each other. So I'm fine? Yeah, quite. What? <laughs> so he just lets him go and he says, hey, we also have a, 
um, a tele- I give you an, a phone here that if you contact, you can contact us at any time. And also a pet called Michio or something, Michio. And uh, so he looks at Michio and he sees this. So probably isn't, you know, big brother is watching. <laughs> uh, but then he goes out and he says, Craven lied. It wasn't a nightmare that I had, and the vir- viruses didn't destroy each other. Only his version was destroyed. The brass virus is now part of me, and I'm part of it. I'm not sure how I know, because I don't feel any different. I guess it's an optimistic understanding that I did have before. Of my life, of myself, I don't know. The only thing I know for sure is that I can kick anybody's ass. That's it. That's, that's the comic. What? <laughs> Okay. Great stuff from Brian Bolland, by the way. Yeah, uh, this is a big nothing burger. Um, I have no clue what's going on. It seems that the, the, the idea of the story was bigger that they, would, that they could contain in a free issue story. So basically, the story should have, in my opinion, uh, be way more longer. I don't know, maybe five, six, let's say six issues, right? To explain it all and you know uh, because okay we can make sort of sense of it what's going on but it's very very hard to figure it out because only see I only see a, lots of pretty pictures people talking flying planes a lot of shooting and killing and then this this very um, how do you say um, ending that you know, the, the ending is like, oh, oh, you are healed. And now you can go home. And if you want to call us, here's the telephone. And then you are, or a pager, or a, I don't know, some kind of a beeper. And then, uh, oh, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no brass. And I can kick anybody's ass. What? What is this ending? This is, why would you let him go? Why won't you just, I don't know, do research, use him about his knowledge, in, integrate him into I.O., you know, making... I don't know, part of, uh, of, of the system. I have no fucking clue. They just let him go. Are you crazy? Uh, anyway, I'm, just, I'm rambling. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked the video. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. Right? Okay, see you next time. Bye.